In this video, I'm going to show you how I created a 3D printable lampshade that looks like an angel's trumpet flower. First, we'll model the light fixture, and then I'm going to take a simple sketch and turn it into a three-dimensional form in Fusion 360 using the sculpting tools to add organic lines and curves. Let's get started. First, we'll model the light bulb and socket so that we can be sure our lampshade will fit. We'll make the light bulb parametrically scalable so that we can modify our design to work with multiple sizes of bulb. First I'll click Change Parameters to add a new user parameter, and I'll call it Bulb Diameter. My bulb is around 120 millimeters across. I have a giant, really pretty one that I found on the internet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make that 120 millimeters. We will be able to change this later, so if your bulb is larger or smaller, or if I want to make a lampshade that fits a different size bulb, that's pretty easy to do. Then I'm going to create a sphere. Uh, I'll go ahead and use Create Tool, and choose Sphere, and choose this bottom work plane here. I'm going to make my diameter of my bulb the parameter I just made, bulb diameter, there it is, and hit OK. And you can see that that made the sphere end up exactly halfway through our work plane, which is pretty much what we want. Next, I'm going to create an offset plane for the cylinder at the top of my light fixture to rest on. So I'm going to go to Construct Offset Plane and select, let's see, I'm going to turn my origins on so I can see, I'm going to select that same ground plane here. For the offset distance, I want to make it <coughs> bulb diameter, but not the whole bulb diameter, it'd end up up here. I'm going to make it bulb diameter divided by 2. Is it going to let me do that? All right. Now I have it sitting on top of my, my sphere here, but if I made a cylinder right on the top of the sphere, it wouldn't connect correctly right here, it might be a little tough to get it to all become one thing. So I'm going to actually move this plane down by just a couple millimeters so that it intersects better with the bulb. So I'm going to hit Edit Feature here. And instead of bulb diameter divided by 2, I'm going to make it bulb diameter divided by 2 minus 5 so that it goes down by about 5 millimeters. And as you can see, it's sort of intersecting pretty nicely right in with my bulb here. All right. Now I can construct my cylinder sitting on top of this plane. So we'll go to Create Cylinder and choose that plane as our, as our plane and choose the center as our origin point. My light socket's about 35 millimeters in diameter, so I'll use 35 millimeters there. This doesn't need to be parametric because my light socket's going to be the same size no matter what size the bulb is. So 35 millimeters, uh, the height of it is, is about 63 millimeters. And I want to choose join over here. But I did sink it down by about 5 millimeters right here, so I want to add that 5 millimeters back into the height of the cylinder so that it's, it's more accurate with, the, with real life. So I'm going to make it 68 instead of 63. And we're going to choose join. And there we go, we have a nice light fixture here, it's starting to look like my light fixture. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet the top of this cylinder so that it looks a little bit more like my light fixture. I'm just going to go to the fillet tool here and we'll just do it by about 10 millimeters. It doesn't need to be perfect, I just want it to look a little bit more like my light fixture so that I can curve around it more easily. I have a little bit of hardware sitting on the very top of the light fixture right before the cord comes out, so I want to model that as well. I'm going to choose the top of this cylinder here and create another offset plane. Um, and my plane is going to be about 30 millimeters up. Oops, not 300. 30 millimeters up. Uh, and then I'm going to create a sketch on this new plane. I'm going to choose a center diameter circle sketch right on this plane and choose the same center point and make a 10 millimeter circle right on this plane that I just made. I'll hit stop sketch and now what I want to do is make a cone shape that goes from here to here. So the way to do that is to use the loft tool. I'll go to create loft 
and choose my two profiles, the inputs, and as you can see, it'll make a nice cone shape that goes directly from the top of the cylinder to the top of my light fixture. Um, I'm going to make sure it says join over here uh, so that it all becomes one thing and click OK. So that looks pretty good. It looks a lot like my light fixture looks in real life. I've got a cord coming out of the top of this, but uh, that's going to be right at the top of the light fixture. It should be just fine. Um, I'll go ahead and name this body that we made lamp. The next thing I want to do is add a picture of an angel's trumpet to my sketch so that I have something to trace in order to make my sketch look as much like reality as possible. I'm going to go to insert attached canvas and select one of these vertical faces. And then I have my angel's trumpet image all set up right here. Hit OK. Now there it is. It's real small, but it's come in into my, my browser here under canvases. That's where I can find it. I'm going to right click on that and hit edit canvas so that I can make it a little bit bigger so it's the right size to fit our, our lampshade. I'm just going to kind of scale it and move it until it looks about like what I, what I want. And that looks pretty good. It looks like it's going to fit nicely right over the flower and sit close to where the work plane is here. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and make the sketch tracing the edge of the flower that will then revolve into our lampshade. For that I'm going to hit new sketch and go to the spline tool. Now the spline tool is going to, I'll, I'll choose the plane I'm going to draw on, and the spline tool is going to allow me to sort of trace the edge of this flower right here um, and see how we can revolve it into something real similar to the way these flowers look in real life. I'm going to start all the way on this green line right here, a little bit above my, my lampshade. And then I can just drag and create points all the way along. It wants to kind of snap here, so I've got to be careful. All the way along the edge of this flower until I get to the edge I want to do. I'm not going to go all the way to the end here just because, well, I'll, it'll become a little bit more apparent when we get into the form sculpting. I do want to just pull those points out. I want to make this uh, be sort of the, the most part of the body of the flower I can. I'm going to finish by double clicking and now I have my, my spline sketch that looks pretty good. It looks a bit like the flower shade, um, but it's also pretty close to the light bulb. I don't want to get out too far because I, I know that the limit of my 3D print bed is going to be somewhere around here. So let's keep it within, <laughs> within the size range it wants to be. Now I can hit stop sketch and I'll go ahead and turn off this canvas. You can see we have this nice curve here that, that it's going to be able to turn right into an angel's trumpet. In order to do that, we're going to go to Create Form. I'm going to select my sketch, and then I'm going to go to Revolve. It's going to ask me what axis I want to use, and I'm going to use this blue axis right here, and there we go. It suddenly has a pretty lampshade shape. Uh, that was pretty easy. I want to tweak a few of the parameters here. Um, for the number of faces, I want to up that a little bit. Let's go ahead and make 10 faces, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe 12 faces going along here. You can see and just play with this and see how it changes the shape of your flower. And going around, I want to add a lot more faces too. I'm going to make this 30. The reason I want to use 30 is because my angel's trumpet, an actual flower, has five petals kind of pulling out. So I want to make sure it's something divisible by five. 
so that I can uh, make it look a little bit, when I'm doing the sculpting, it, it works out more evenly. All right, that looks pretty good. Now it's time to start sculpting. To get into the sculpting mode, just click on modify and we'll get this edit form window. There's a bunch of cool different features we can, we can choose in here. The transform mode, it tells you uh, whether you're rotating or stretching or scaling, whatever it is. Um, if you keep this one selected, then you can do all three at once. Uh, coordinate space, uh, just play with these. I found that the local control seems to work the best on this particular project, but each one's gonna be a little different. And then selection filter, it gives you control over choosing vertexes or edges or faces or all three. I wanna start by selecting some vertexes, so I'm just gonna choose that. Well, I'll, I'll keep it on face control. And now I can just go in and start, start sculpting. The first thing I wanna do is create the points of the flower that are gonna pull out. So I'm gonna to go to this vertex that's just right on the edge right here, and I'm gonna count around and select all five uh, equidistant points. So I just need to count over, since I, I did 30 faces, I need to count over six points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Here I am, I'm gonna hold down the shift button and select that point as well so that they're both selected. We'll do the same all the rest of the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I've got five equidestant points right here. We can go ahead and drag and pull those out using these tools to make them look like pointy little flowers. I'm gonna use this scale tool right here and you can see that's working really nicely. Again, I don't wanna go out too much like this because if I do that, then um, I might reach over the limits of my 3D print bed. Uh, so I'm gonna kinda go up instead. We'll go up, not too much, about like this. That looks pretty nice. Now I wanna go ahead and add some creases. My angel's trumpet flower has a crease along the top of each petal, and then also a crease on these two lines sort of on either side of this crease. So what I'm gonna do is I can just double click and the whole line will select itself. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just make sure you're getting a, an edge, and not a vertex. I'm holding down the shift button and I'm gonna double click on the line on each point plus the line on either side. Okay, I've got all 15 lines selected. So I'm going to go to Modify and then choose Crease. Oh, and look at that, it makes it nice and creasy. I'll hit OK. That looks great on this section, but it's a little pointier than I want on the edges. It looks like it, it made it a little bit too pointy. So at this point, well, this is the fun part. I get to go in and just keep sculpting and uh, make it so that each of the, the petals looks as much like an angel's trumpet as I can. The one thing I really wanna watch out for as I'm sculpting is it's real easy to pull the edges or the vertexes a little too far. It's, if I, if I were to pull, let's say the edge in like this much, you see how it's intersecting with itself right here. It looks kind of pretty. It would be cool if we could do that. But then if you try and hit finish form, it's not gonna work. Uh, the form cannot intersect with itself uh, or it won't convert co correctly. You see I'm getting this error. So I'm gonna go return and I'm gonna undo what I just did with Command Z. And uh, just keep in mind that uh, as you're sculpting, try clicking finish form a bunch just to make sure that uh, you're still within the parameters of the T-spline uh, of the T-spline conversion. You can always go back uh, into, your, into your form editing just by right clicking down here and clicking edit form. All right, what do we wanna to do to this? I'm going to take, I, I want it to be a little bit more asymmetric. Right now, 
it is completely perfect all the way around. And an angel's trumpet flower in real life is a little bit less like that. They're a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more organic. So each of the exact five petals are not exactly the same. I'm gonna try grabbing some of these vertexes, just sort of one at a time. I'm gonna go back into edit mode and I can move them a little bit. So I'm getting rid of some of these creases. If I zoom in, it won't, it won't pop so far. And I'm gonna do each one individually just so that they are a little different and a little more organic. Playing with the different tools here and see which ones will kind of make you feel like you're you're doing you're doing it right. This is just totally up to you. This is the fun sort of artistic part. And I could just do this for hours, so <laughs> I'll sculpt a little bit, but I won't I won't get too into it. Um, the, I'll, I'll go ahead and put the one in the guide that I that I, I sculpted on a really long time in case anybody wants to download that, but it's, it's pretty fun to just make your own and have each one be a little bit unique, uh, just like in nature. All right, I'm going to try finish form again just to make sure what I did is still kosher. That looks pretty good. Oh, that one looks a little funny, so I'm going to go back and... Edit that one again, this one. Uh, be sure that you're spinning around your form and really take notice of, of every angle because it's really easy to kind of get lost here. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna hit okay and finish form. It looks like uh, that last one I I messed up, so I'm just going to hit undo a couple of times until I get back to where I was. Again, this is a this is something that you just need to watch out for. Um, the model needs to not intersect with itself in any way, uh, and the the more you, you mess with it, uh, hit finish form often <laughs> early, and uh, this will this will help you avoid that kind of mess. Once you're happy with the shape and you're sure it's going to work by clicking finish form, then the last thing we need to do in this forms window is we need to thicken this. Right now it's just geometry, it's not actually a 3D printable thing, it's just sort of, it's got no thickness to it. So in order to add thickness we can go to modify, thicken, and select our body. Um, for the thickness I'm just going to put one millimeter. Um, I found that one millimeter or 1.5, you know, I'll do 1.25. Uh, the thicker the lampshade is, kind of the more 3D print material it will take, but it will also kind of block the light a little bit more. Uh, if you want it more translucent, make it thinner. If you want it more um, opaque, make it a little thicker. I'm going to choose soft as my edge, so it's nice and rounded on the edges. And a direction normal is fine, and hit OK. And now I have a thicker version that will actually print in uh, <laughs> the real world. I'll click finish form and make sure everything still looks good. And success. We have our pretty little lampshade uh, hovered right over our bulb. The last thing we need to do to it is we need to make a hole in the top for the lamp cord to come through. Luckily we, oh, first I'll name this, uh, name this, this body so we know where we are. I'm going to name it Flower. We already have a sketch uh, that we can use to create the hole. So we have, let's see, this sketch right here, which is that one that we made on the offset plane for the very top of the hardware. I'm going to turn the flower off for just a second so we can see it. Now I'm going to make a I'm going to extrude from this sketch right here. I'm just going to hit the E button and I can go ahead and extrude upwards and I'm just going to extrude upwards a whole bunch. Let's go ahead and turn this flower back on and you can see that when we turn the flower on it'll turn red and it'll automatically go to cut and since we've gone all the way through the lampshade we can just click OK and that easily makes a little 10 millimeter diameter hole at the very top of our lampshade. That looks lovely. It looks like it's going to fit real nicely on top of our bulb. 
uh, I think we might be ready to send it to the printer. To send it to the printer, I'm going to just right click over here on the body and choose Save as STL. I already have it set up in here to send to my print utility, which is Simplify 3D. So I'm going to click OK, and it's going to pop up right in Simplify 3D. I have another model in here that I'm going to remove. First thing I want to do is just name it. We're going to call it Angel's Trumpet. And we're going to just make sure it fits on the print bed. It looks really like it's going to fit just right in, in my space. I'm printing on a uh, Sigma BCN 3D printer. And uh, it looks like it's ready to go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into my process settings and just make sure everything is what I want. Right now I have, uh, I'm, I'm going to be printing with PLA. And the color that I want is set up in my left extruder. So I'm going to make sure that left extruder is is selected under my layer. Um, I'm going to use a layer height of just three millimeters. This is something that I can mess with. If I have it um, lower resolution, it's going to print a little bit smoother, but it's a pretty big piece. It's going to be up on the ceiling, so a little bit lower resolution is fine. Um, I don't think I need a skirt or a brim just because it is seated pretty nicely on the 3D print bed. And in fill, I'm going to use left extruder as well. Support material, I need to find out whether I think support material is going to be needed. Let's go ahead and click on generate support material for right now. I have a max overhang angle of 60 degrees and I'm using my left extruder again. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and, and use support material for now just to see. Then when I go to prepare to print, Simplify 3D will let me sort of watch as it as it prints. And it looks to me like it's this particular one is printing pretty nicely without support material because I did choose um, 60. I chose uh, 60 as my as my max overhang angle. Um, so I think that I think that's gonna it's gonna look great. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it to my printer. And they turned out really lovely. I used a color changing filament that changes from a spring green to a beautiful angel's trumpet yellow when it gets warm. And the heat of the light bulb does turn the shades yellow, which is really a lot of fun. If you like this tutorial, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun videos and uh, let us know in the comments if you make one. I'd love to see photos. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.